Joining me today on Sky Sports IndyCar is 22-year-old Californian native and IndyCar sensation, very much the man at the moment, Colton Herter. Colton, it's been a busy few weeks for you. Just talk us through what you've been up to. A lot of different stuff. You know, mostly over here on the U.S. racing side of things, um, you know, IndyCar Obviously, my main my main role in championship takes up a lot of my time, a lot of testing, media days, getting to race the car, which is my favorite part. Um, and then I hopped over over the pond to uh, to see you guys in, in England for a little bit. Went to the uh, McLaren factory, got my seat fit, and uh, had my first two days in an F1 car. And how was that for you in Portimao? I mean, it was really warm in Europe at the moment, heat wave sort of conditions. Did did you take it in your stride? Yeah, it was it was really cool. The, the team was, you know, really accepting and helpful about getting me up to speed and time and and whatnot. But um, just the car itself was was pretty spectacular to drive. It was, um, you know, had a lot of cool tech on it that that we don't quite have over here on IndyCar. Um, but it's yeah, just the overall power and downforce of those cars of that of that era. You know, they were the fastest Formula One cars that the world's ever seen, and and really some of the fastest race cars ever made so um it is it was a, a pleasure to, to be able to drive it and, and not only get a test of an f1 car but get to test a, a race winning f1 car which is really neat so we talk a lot about the steering in indycar and just how physical it is on the bumps and some of the circuits but formula one all about the neck i mean how did your neck hang on in those braking zones and also some of the long corners that long right hander onto the back straight yeah, it was it was actually okay. Um, you know, I, for sure, I was sore at the end of at the end of two days of testing. Um, but you know, it hung on all right, and I was never really hanging out of the seat and couldn't hold my head up. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was new in advance that that I was going to test, so I had plenty of time to prepare and and be physically fit because you know. We do focus on the neck and IndyCar, but there are more important parts of the body for, for us over here with the arms and back and stuff uh, without power steering. But so, yeah, it was a, a complete change to have like a nice smooth steering and, and everything felt fine. And then on the neck, a lot more force. So, but yeah, pit fit, people I work out with out here in Indy, same guys that work with Alexander Rossi and Scott Dixon. A lot of these, these IndyCar drivers work, work with pit fit out here and they've done a tremendous job getting me ready for that. Um, and you know, physically, it was it was fine the whole time. And did you get to hang out with Lando? Because that's the McLaren tie. And, you know, if I go back to when we first met, you were over here in 2015 doing MSA Formula, teammates with Lando Norris. So do you still keep in contact with him? And did he give you any advice prior to the test? Somewhat. Obviously, we don't get to see each other, each other as much. We're both very, very busy. But I did get to see him. Um, where was it? I saw him in Miami. He wasn't... Um, uh, yeah, I actually did run into him in, in England. I was just at dinner and he ended up being at the same spot. So I got to see him again when I was over there doing the seat fit. But um, yeah, it's it's really cool to see, especially like when you grow up racing against guys and, and they end up making it to professional motorsport, um, you know, and racing different things. It's it's pretty awesome to see that. And, and he's obviously been doing really well. So yeah, he did give me some pointers and, and some helpful tips for the car, um, which I tried to use the best of my abilities. So you've had some wonderful stables in terms of learning environments. How was it for you coming over to the UK 2015 and being involved with a team like Carlin, having a teammate like Lando with all the noise? Because I always say, you know, when I talk to people about you, your outright speed is phenomenal. You, you are that type of individual. And I remember watching you in 2015. You could go to circuits that we hadn't seen or driving conditions that that were inclement the rain had just arrived and, and your absolute outright speed was phenomenal but maybe a bit of a rough diamond as you were green and developing at that age but mm -hmm. you've carried that on throughout your career I mean you know you you are just blisteringly quick but how valuable was it to be in that stable that Carlin stable and have the teammates that you had early on in your career for, I mean for sure Trevor Trevor's an amazing team owner um and really put together an amazing program over there for young drivers and, and still continues to. So, um, yeah, for me, it was, it was probably the most important time in my life to, to becoming a professional race car driver. I learned so much. I did 
25 test days in 2015 and I did 30 races. Um, Do you miss Pembury? So, <laughs> yes and no. I mean, the weather was, was pretty brutal, but it reminds me of, of good times and there's so much fun being over there. Um, I, I miss it all the time. It was an amazing experience, but um, yeah, it was, it, it was just so important at that age, you know, to be in the car as much as possible and to have good engineers to point out what I'm doing wrong or uh, what we need to be doing better for the car to make it work, work more for my style. Um, and so I, I learned a bunch at 15, 16 years old, driving around um, with Carlin and, and having, obviously having good teammates like that, like Lando, um, to just push you forward. I think we both pushed each other so hard that year and just made everybody better. Yeah, I think you're one of the, the only teammates, it's fair to say, to, to really beat Lando on his day, which is no mean feat. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's, he shows that he's a very fast driver. And, and I think, you know, both of us in our own right kind of learned our talents through through Carlin and being over there um, at such a young age and, and having that much track time. It's just it was crazy to me. It was unheard of for for over here in the States for for the junior series to have that much track time um, and go to some really, really awesome tracks, too. Mm. So you continue through Euro Formula. Then you came back to the States, Andretti, Steinbrenner connection through Indy Lights. Big car, big heavy car, learning your trade. And it was very much your projection onto the to the big stage there into IndyCar. And you took two years to learn your trade. But then when you exploded onto the scene, your debut year in IndyCar, just talk us through that, because the, the step up from Indy Lights to IndyCar is vast. And then to go and do what you did, I think you took everyone by surprise. Did you surprise yourself? For sure. For sure. I surprised myself. You know, I, I, I was hoping that, you know, at the end of the year, I would be in a position that I could win races um, and, and maybe win one. But I didn't expect the pace to be there so fast um, and just feel so comfortable with the car right away. Even at my first test, I, was, I, I felt like I could drive really close to the limit um, and, you know, for sure, there was still some time in it for me to find early on, but I felt so close that like just, it was so comfortable. The team for me, Harding Steinbrenner Racing, what I came into was was the perfect team. It wasn't a big organization. It was a small team, not a lot of people. Um, and yeah, I'm actually like I'm in there. I'm in their old shop right now. This is this is my dad's shop now where he's running his Hyundai TCR cars out of. But this used to be the Harding Steinbrenner shop, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, like a small, small, small team, not a lot of people, uh, not a lot of resources and stuff. And that really just made me comfortable. And, and getting up to speed was just that much easier for me because there wasn't all this white noise of being on a large team like Andretti and a lot of teammates and pressure to perform and whatnot. Uh, so I was able to kind of go at my own pace, which is the best for me. Yeah. And then you progressed into the Andretti fold. And, you know, it's fair to say, and people were asking you early on last year, team leader, you know, you had some big names in that team last year. Mm -hmm. You sort of led by example. Not only are you incredibly robust on the track, but you've just got this calm persona about you when you're off the track as well. And that seemed to, to mix well. And you progressed progressed into that team leader role and I know you were asked once or twice am I the team leader and you're like well you know it's not, not a tag that you you sort of uh, wanted to admit to but it's uh, it, it's definitely on the tip of everyone else's tongue right I mean it's 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 important you definitely need somebody and and Rossi was that guy for a long time right until you know now now he's leaving with the team and this will be my going into my fourth year in 23 with the team. So I, I would have been there the longest by quite a bit to everybody else, um, even though a pretty short stint. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it kind of naturally just folds into that, that you know you know, the most about the team. You've been there for, for a lot of the development of the damping and, and whatnot that you guys have found. So you understand what works and what doesn't at some points. Um, and so, yeah, I guess you kind of do develop into that that leadership role for me, it was always, you know, Ryan Hunter Ray when he was at the team, been there for, for 10 years um, when he left. And, um, you know, Rossi again, six, I think six years, maybe seven years um, with the team. So been there a long time. And, and now I'm kind of getting to that point where I can understand, oh, you know, remember when we did this or remember when we did that and 
why did this work? Why didn't that work? And I can kind of, um, I try to point the team in the, in the correct dire direction, but it is, uh, it is a, is, it is a big thing, right? Like I, I looked up to a lot of these guys that, that were the team leaders beforehand with Alex and Ryan Hunter Ray. And they helped me a bunch when I first came into IndyCar as well. So, um, yeah, it is, it is for sure a big ask, but we have really good drivers and with Kyle coming in next year and then obviously Romal, um, it's, we have really fast drivers and it's, it's definitely a possibility that, that we can get to the championship next year. And what do you look to develop in yourself? So when we talked to Scott McLaughlin, he was talking a lot about the, the, the mental side of things, how he prepared at the start of this year, working with his engineering team, that kind of stuff, the golf that they play. And you've got Will Power 2.0, you know, this new Will Power who's just really laissez-faire when, when things go wrong. What do you do to, to sort of maximize yourself and where are you looking to develop as well? Um, I mean, I think we're always... I think it goes out saying that we're always looking for speed um, just in ourselves and, and mastering little things. Uh, you know, once you get to this level, you're supposed to know how to drive a race car and you're supposed to know how to get the maximum lap time out of a race car. So, um, you know, we can, we're looking in the data just for these tiny things, but beyond that, it's just understanding the car itself and what I need from it more. So, um, you know, when you have a race like the Indy 500, where it's two and a half hours, there's so much rubber that goes down. It changes the balance so much. And you need to understand what you're going to want during that time. Maybe it's front wing, tire pressure change, rear wing, um, or maybe you know exactly before the race, right? Like these guys, when you listen to like Elio speak, um, you know, he knows exactly what he wants from the car and he knows when he's not happy during the month of May. He knows what it's going to be like on race day and he knows this isn't right. I need more of, more of this or less of this. And um, so he's very methodical at a guy like that. Same as Simon Pagino, he's really good um about explaining that this year and, and what he needed what he didn't need so um that's for me like the biggest thing that i'm still learning uh, how hard know, is it when you're in a bigger organization to come in and get out the car and say no this is what i want and 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 to almost hold your ground and have that confidence and courage i think it's okay i've never had a problem with that with like andretti autosport they've always been very accepting and, and welcoming to to what i need out of the car um but the best thing is just understanding what you need or, or, and if you don't know, learning from it, right? When you do make a mistake, say, oh, well, this race is going to, the, the rear tires are going to degrade so much. I need a lot more rear stability going into the race. And uh, they give you that and the car just understeers like a pig and you're like, oh, okay, well, now I need to look at what was going on, the temperatures, the wind, like all this sort of data. Um in the mechanical balance of the car and, and so it, it is um it is a lot it's a lot all the time so um yeah trying to compartmentalize everything and, and make it as simple as possible is really, really important also and what's it like working with your dad because that's always a challenge when you've got that sort of parental figure around in in households growing up my stepfather played professional cricket and it was always hard listening to him when I was sort of 10 and 11, but obviously you're, you're a chunk older now. And that, that sort of bond that you have is, is really strong. It's evident. It, it looks like it's a really powerful relationship. Yeah, it works well. And I, you know, I was, I was the same way with, with my dad when I was, you know, go-karts from, I don't know, maybe six to five to 11, um, he would have to get the, the mechanic to tell me what to do because if it came from him, I was like, no, don't yeah. want to hear it. Yeah. Don't want to hear it. And after his IndyCar career, and he was actually getting paid by teams to driver coach IndyCar yeah. drivers. That's <laughs> it, right? You just don't want to listen. <laughs> yeah, <he's like, laughs> I know best. Getting paid to tell people what to what to do and how to drive, but but he won't listen to me. So, yeah, I think as as time kind of grew on, I got a little older. I was like, yeah, he, he probably knows what he's talking about, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's, and he's he's brilliant. He's very calm as well. Yeah, yeah, that's the most important thing. Yeah, he is cool. Right, uh, before because I know you've got a busy day. So before you go, just tell us more about your band because I know you're big into your gigs. You are gigging. You do a lot of things away from the racetrack, but music is is something that that you really enjoy. Yeah, it's I I just love I love playing the drums. I played the drums since I was maybe I picked it up maybe when I was like eleven. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I just, I enjoy it so much and, and we made a band, I think, I don't know, maybe 2019, see you later, like, um, maybe like 2019 and, and got 
a lot of the people I went to high school with, high school buddies, learned instruments and stuff. Um, and so, yeah, we're playing. We actually play tonight in Indianapolis. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy it. We, we, we always enjoyed it in high school and it just kind of kept going from there. So you're playing tonight? Where yeah. Around? Like downtown? It's called, yeah, it's called the Melody Inn. It's a little dive bar. Oh, that's cool. All right, nice mm -hmm. little plug. So uh, if you're in Indianapolis and you want to see Colton and his band play, get down to the to the Melody Bar, did you say? Melody Inn. Yeah, Melody Inn. Awesome. Hold out. Hold out. So. Awesome. Well, listen, you've been a fabulous guest. It's a, a real yeah. pleasure. I know you're extremely busy. It's the GMR Grand Prix this weekend. So um, lots on. You've got your gig tonight, photo shoot this afternoon. But uh, Colton Herta, thanks so much for joining us on Sky Sports IndyCar and the best of luck for the rest of the year. Thank you.